<laughs> Welcome to <laughs> Speed and Velocity. But first, review. Directions of vectors can be important, ladies and gentlemen. Um, in Science 10, in physics, everything moves like it's on train tracks. It can go one way or the other. There is no turning. So, one direction is always positive. The other direction is always negative. These are always opposites. Again, just to review convention, up, north, right, east are usually positive, down, south, left, and west are usually negative in equations. So, let's do a quick example. This will take absolutely no time at all. We're looking at this thing which starts at a position of approximately 270 and it goes down to 150. How do I find what my first displacement is? I take my final, 150, positive, and I will subtract my initial, positive 270, and I get that my displacement is negative 120 meters. The D2, I look at where we started, 150, and I look at where we finished, 170. I do final, 170, minus initial, 150, 50, and we get a displacement of positive 20. How do I find my total displacement start to finish? Negative 120 plus positive 20 equals negative 100 meters. That was the bell. <laughs> Super awkward bell. Super awkward computer freeze. The next thing we're going to quickly review is distance versus displacement. Again, we've done tons of these calculations in class. You should be very, 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 very familiar with this calculation. Again, distance like we see in the first example here. Okay, all we're seeing with distance is the direction really doesn't matter. We're simply just adding all these numbers together to get an answer of 1,324 meters. Whereas displacement, on the other hand, when we're adding all of these together, now we start seeing north is positive, south is negative, north is positive, south is negative. And we see these values brought into our calculation here. Okay, so obviously we see positive, which means 35 meters north, negative, positive, negative. Okay, all of these are considered with the direction. So overall, when we plug this into the calculator, we have a negative value, which means 504 meters south. Again, we substitute the negative with the direction if directions are given to us. And this saves you having to draw pictures and drawing lots of arrows. It's actually a lot faster. So now the real stuff. Motion. Speed. Speed, as its definition, is how far did you go and how long did it take you? That means that we need a uh, distance and we need a time. Most of the time, the formula is actually shown with this little symbol, which is called delta, and we saw it before, it just means change. So as long as you actually change your distance or change your position, you have moved. That's a no-brainer. If you have moved, we can find out how fast you went. Again, another way we can represent this, like we see this, would be d2 minus d1 over t. Just like we saw before, we're going to see with some later formulas, it's a good habit to get into final minus initial. Again, some common things you want to pay close attention to with speed, uh, the distance, all that kind of stuff. Knowing what the units are for each one of these variables is super important in identifying it in the problem solving process. And we'll do that when we get to an example. Exactly. There are three types of speed. One of these, uniform speed, is the one we are going to use tons of. Lots of our problems, we assume that we have uniform speed, and the nice part of that is that uniform speed and average speed actually can start to be used interchangeably. But uniform speed means uniform same, as in your speed is constant. Average speed says that your speed could be actually go up and down a little bit, but we're just going to consider it the average. This is like what we do when we draw a line of best fit. The data might not be a perfect straight line, like uniform speed, but we could find an average. Instantaneous speed is something we're not actually going to deal with until we get to acceleration. This is where you could look at the speed of something at one given point in time, like a radar gun. You could drive the speed limit for eight hours, but if the radar gun shines on you in that two seconds that you happen to be speeding, your instantaneous speed would make it look like you were going too fast and you're going to get to meet a police officer. So again, we, we, should, we talked about this in the last video a little bit. Uniform motion is motion at a constant rate of change. There's no change in the magnitude or the direction. The positive versus time graph for uniform motion is always in a straight line. 
If it's not in a straight line, we see it non-uniform, and we talk about that a little bit more in acceleration. Okay, obviously the slope of our distance time graph is our velocity or speed. Just depends on which one you started with. Exactly. Distance gives you speed. And position gives you? Velocity. So, Dr. Doom walks at 3.01 meters per second for 23.3 seconds to complete an unnamed evil plan. How far does he travel? There's the bell again. So we're going to take a look at this with, with the important variables we have. We obviously have two numbers given to us here. We can identify the units. Meters per second here it tells us that we have a speed. There's no direction with it, so we would assume it's a speed. So we see 3.01 meters per second. And obviously with the seconds here, that is a time value, which gives us 23.3 seconds. And last but not least, it's asking how far does he travel? So that implies we are looking for the change in distance. And it's important to note, guys, when you read a question, try to figure out what it's actually asking. As in, how far normally means distance. Okay. How much time would imply time? Or how okay. long. Despite the fact that long sounds like distance, it actually means time. Exactly. So we started with our normal speed equation, where we have change in distance over time. We're obviously looking for distance to move time over. We multiply. So our new formula here would be distance is equal to VT. And we're ready to plug in and solve. Okay, everything's in the same units. We have seconds and seconds here and here. Okay, so we do not need to do any unit conversions. So we would end up seeing 3.01 meters per second times 23.3 seconds. Can, seconds cancel. And we end up getting an answer of 70.133 meters. Again, we take significant digits into account. We have three here, three here. We have three in our answer. So our answer here would come down to be, let me just extend the page, 70.1 oh, meters. And it's important to note, guys, just as Rainier did there, if you're ever not sure, take a moment, look back up. Whatever unit's left over is the unit that you have. You can actually use this to prevent making mistakes. How much time is required for a hockey puck traveling at 50 meters per second to travel a distance of 6.0 kilometers? So I'm going to undergo the exact same thing. How much time? A meters per second and a 6 kilometers. D is equal to 6.0 kilometers. V is equal to 50 meters per second. T is my unknown. Now that I'm looking at this, um, guys, at this point, normally we want you to start realizing your units don't match. Which one is easier to convert? Meters and seconds or just kilometers? Uh, I normally go with changing the thing that's easier and all by itself. So this is 6,000 meters. Now I can do the exact same thing that Rainer did. We start off with, I have all of these variables. I'm going to go find a formula with all of those variables. I'm going to rearrange it for time. We're not going to go through how to rearrange here. We've already done that. You should be okay at this by now. After I have rearranged the formula, I'm going to sub in my values. 6,000 meters divided by 50 meters per second, and meters cancel, giving us, extending a little further, boop, 120 seconds. The last thing I will do is I will pop back up two significant digits, two significant digits. In the unit conversion, that doesn't matter. Those are exact values. We don't have to worry about them. We have our two significant digits. This is equal to 1.2 times 10 squared seconds. I guess I could left that up for half a second longer. Awkward. Okay, anyway, I can't get to it. There we go. On the little puggy question. Sparky, the psychotic physics puppy, walks 10.4 meters in 29.3 seconds, stops and takes a quick nap for 45.9 seconds, and then travels 12.0 meters in 13.0 seconds. Calculate its average speed. Now, there's two ways we can do this. Okay, McLeod, take it away. Uh, I would normally look at this as soon as it says average speed. We don't care about all the little instantaneous ones at all. All we care about is that our V has to equal our t 
total distance divided by our total time. So in order to calculate this, we're going to add up and find our total distance. 10.4 plus 12 gives us 22.4 meters. What is our total time? Well, we have this 29.3 seconds. We have our 13 seconds, but he took a nap. This is part of his travel. This affects his average. We get 88.2 seconds. After this, we smash this into our calculator. 22.4 meters divided by 88.2 seconds, and we start to find a number of 0 0.253968. What do we do for the units? Well, just look at your units, guys. Nothing canceled. This is meters per second. Meters per second is a unit of speed, so we actually are okay here. Now, when it comes to the significant digits, we start looking at it, and we've pretty much got three significant digits kicking around everywhere. 0.254 meters per second. So when we talk velocity, not much changes with the actual calculation itself. So we're, we're going to maybe do one quick little example after this. Um, the average velocity of an object can be determined by this formula. The only thing that is different is the fact instead of dealing with a distance change, you're changing your displacement or your position. So we're focusing more on displacement rather than distance. So knowing the, the, the difference between the two is very important. The other thing you see in your formula, if you get one arrow on one side, you typically are going to have an arrow somewhere else. So that if your displacement is east, your velocity will automatically be east. Or if you put them on the same side, they'll cancel each other out. Whoa. Whoa. Mr. Page. Back up. Okay, so again, when we take a look at this wonderful example, we're just going to compare average speed and average velocity. A man walks 75 meters west and then 192 meters east. If the time required was 90 seconds, what was the average speed of the man? So when we take a look at this, we don't, in this case with average speed, direction doesn't matter. So all we're doing here is we have our distance is equal to 75 plus 192, which is 267, 267. And then we would take that and plug that into our speed formula for distance over time, which would give us 267 divided by 90, which is 2.996. Okay, so we, now we end up seeing we have two significant digits. We round off a two, and we see 3.0 meters per second. Okay, again, no direction since we have speed. Now, when we look at average velocity, we need to find the displacement. So we are taking a look at, um, we obviously have 192 east, which is a positive value. We have one, uh, 75 meters west, which is a negative value. When we're taking these and adding them together, we get 192 minus 75 gives us 117 meters to the positive, which means east. Okay, and again, the time still stays the same, so we're going to just divide by our 90 seconds to give us our answer of 1.3 meters per second. Oh, east. Randomly changed colors there. That's pretty great. Awesome. Okay, so obviously we take a look. The same thing as distance and displacement. We often see displacement. Okay, we often see these are not necessarily the exact same thing. And if one is going to be bigger, it's probably speed, just like how distance was bigger. We also see the carry forward of the sign. If you had east here, there is nothing down here to cancel it out. The east ends up in your answer still. That direction is part of the units on the question. Okay, again, you will be docked a little bit for, for improper units if you forget to do this. Because you're not understanding that it's a vector. Vectors need direction.